Did you fly Delta? I did. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Oh, it's unfortunately I missed the dinner last night because we had storms in Atlanta, so it was five hours uh, delayed getting in last night. Alan said, was it Delta? I said, no, it was the weather. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be very careful in our business about that. <laughs> so um, uh, can we talk a little bit about this decision that you yeah. made? I mean, I, I grew up in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, so just two hours north of where you are. Well, when I turned 13, I got my first shotgun. It was a rite of passage. It was considered part of a moral upbringing. Uh, you're in a city and in a state where the N people see the NRA as having protected that right for years and years and years, and yet you made the decision to end your relationship with that organization. Why did you do it? Well, Ren, counter to the values. Uh, I, mentioned, I was watching your, your opening remarks here and read some of what you wrote this morning, because I did read your, your little daily this morning. I even, and you do it every it. morning, right? Most mornings. Okay, Most good. Mornings. I try to do it every morning. <laughs> uh, and um, you know, what, at Delta, you know, our, our values are everything. It, it's the culture of the company. It allows us to be who we are. Uh, we've got 85,000 employees around the world that want to know what we stand for. And when we saw the divisive rhetoric coming out of the NRA following the, uh, the shootings, and Honestly, I did not even know we had, because it's a relatively modest, small little discount program uh, that we had with the NRA, but any implied endorsement that anyone could ever attach Delta to, to the NRA, we, we couldn't be part of it at that point. We had to stand and take notice. We were not the only ones. You know, a number of other companies did the same did, thing. Did you talk to your board? Uh, not in advance of the decision. You didn't? I did Did not. you get any pushback from the board? No, no, the board, the board read about it as, uh, as everyone else did that next morning as soon as we made the decision and the, the uh, sparks started flying. And no one said, hey, you, you know, we have, we have a lot of people who fly this airlines who are members of the NRA. Yeah, well, we knew that. And we've got a lot of people that were also offended by the yeah. comments of the, uh, of the NRA. Uh, many, many more that were offended than were actually advocates of it. Uh, I did have a couple of board members, you know, wonder why I, I felt the need to move as quickly as we did as soon as we found out that we had this little discount program, which we have for thousands of organizations. It's not a big, big discount program. I, uh, I told them that that, that, was, that ran so counter to, the, to who we are that it, the decision to make it, and we knew there was going to be potential backlash, the decision to make it to me was crystal clear. Did you have to scrub your list of other organizations that you have to see if there were other organizations that you might not feel comfortable with? Uh, we have, and, and we've, we've ended some relationships as a result as well. Two, three, 10, nope. 15? Nope, not giving any. And <laughs> Orders no, of no, magnitude, no. I mean, it's, bigger it's, than a it, bread box. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably about 20. About 20. Uh, yeah. But we're not, gonna, we're not gonna talk about who they are. Yeah, but that's very interesting. So that suggests that that exercise had never been done before. Not at that level, not at that level. It put a, a, another screen on top of what we view to be just a simple, and it was just going to their national convention. It wasn't that they could travel on their own personal time just as a right of being an NRA member. It was just the opportunity to go to one convention. But that's a pretty clear uh, piece of evidence that you're holding the organization to a higher standard than it has been held to in the past. No question about it, and, and our people demanded it. Uh, you know, there was a uh, there was a point during that process that people were uh, not certain why we made the decision when we did, because we had, um, you know, the, the state legislature came out. In, it, was, it was certainly it was the lead story in Atlanta for about ten days. It led to questions whether Delta is even going to stay in Atlanta headquartered there. Which was that ever an issue? Never an issue. Never an issue. And I I, but, moved, but, I moved to dismiss it quickly. But you did have this uh, tax issue pending before the state legislature. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. There's a $40 million exemption that the state had already approved to, uh, it wasn't, and by the way, it wasn't just Delta, it was all the uh, airlines operating out of Hartsfield Jackson in Atlanta to, uh, to eliminate fuel taxes. And um, we're the biggest beneficiary, $40 million a year of those savings. And when the, as soon as we made the decision to end the uh, discount, the NRA, Members of the state legislature were, were up in arms, uh, which is most of the state which is most of, most of the state legislature, and they said that publicly, if we did not drop our opposition to the NRA and, and that mo modest discount program, that they were going to eliminate the uh, the tax benefit that we were ready to receive. And we said, well, if that's that's the decision you take. You take that decision, but we we were not going to be moved by it. So at a minimum, leaving aside whether it's affected bookings or anything like that, at a minimum, you lost $40 million. $40 million a year. 
mm -hmm. uh, and, and how do you justify that to your investors? Well, from, a, uh, from an investor standpoint, the most important asset we got on our balance sheet is, is our culture and, and our values, and I think that's a modest investment in the culture of the business. So uh, one, one of the, it, so clearly something, as we were talking about earlier, something very different is going on, that you're, you feel, your employees feel that you need to hold the company to a higher value. One of the problems here is that there are so many issues. We now seem to be on a, uh, a cadence of about one a week yep. uh, uh, that come up like this. Are you concerned? I mean, how do you make the decision about which ones you speak out on, you take action on, and which ones you s keep your head down and stay away from? Well, I think that's real important because the last thing that I want to be seen is the CEO as a social activist. That's not my job. My, my job is to run the best airline in the business and to continue to keep all of our constituencies united in that mission. Uh, so you have to be very careful as to where, you, where you're going to pick to engage. And where we've picked to engage are those aspects where it runs directly counter to what we call our rules of the road, to the values of the company. We, uh, a number of years ago, it was interesting, we went back, we're a 90-year-old company and founded in the 1920s by Mr. C.E. Woolman. And uh, we, found, we found some of his writings. We were rummaging. I, I, I use his desk uh, in my office, and we found it in the desk drawer one day. And we, and we, and we, we brought it back out, and we, we updated it for today's times. But we have this little document we call our Rules of the Road that we distribute to all of our employees worldwide, and we require them it's to, to read it and understand in terms of how we, how we approach each other and how we approach our business. And when you understand what, you're, what you stand for and who you are in the context of the world at large, I think it, may, it helps make that decision clear. You know, so they're not viewed as one-off issues. They're viewed as, is this something that's going to be offensive to the culture, to the people, to what we stand, our business purpose. Our purpose in the world is to connect. You know, we've, we've got a mission, and it's an honorable mission, to connect the world, to make the world a smaller place. And we'd like to think that we do it better than anyone. All different businesses connect people in different sorts of ways. We do it physically. Yeah. We do it emotionally. We do it personally. We're, we're a lifestyle brand. We'll carry this year 200 million people around the world. So, and so when, yeah. when you have that responsibility, that's an, an issue that runs counter to where you stand on, on, on issues. That's, that's, what, that's what activates that decision making. So clearly, as you just said, uh, some of the sense of values dates back to the very founding of the company, but some of it is different and new. What do you think is driving the new piece? What, what, why is this happening now? Well, that's an interesting question, and one I've asked myself a lot, because you, you feel it. Um, I feel the pace of change is moving faster than ever before. I think change promotes a lot of uh, angst and anxiety. You know, I travel the world. I'm, I'm on our planes virtually every day somewhere in the world. I can tell you the world is a restless place. Um, it's, it, there's, there's more angst and anxiety. It's not just the U.S. It's not just, certainly not just the U.S. Uh, you know, the populist movement is, 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 is strong and robust. Uh, whether it's here in our country, you look at what's going on in Mexico, they're going to uh, elect a populist next week, looks likely in AMLO. You look at what's going on with Brexit, you look at Spain, you look at many, many parts of the globe, Italy. You know, there's, there's, a, there's an active movement that people are nervous, there's a lot of fear and angst, all of which causes people to move, move away. And in the, in, in the face of that, I think social media takes it and amplifies it but, yeah. and, and creates a, a, a much stronger story and an argument why people should move away rather than move in to you, it. How much of it do you think was there before, but we just didn't know about it because you didn't have the social media amplification? I'm, I'm sure some of that's the case, but I think social media has, has, has actually put the spotlight on it and has forced people to come out and either yeah, and have a view on it. And so I think it, cre it almost creates the dialogue at a higher level and people feel like they have to actually identify yeah. with, with the issues more so than ever before. And, and so how do you, I'm sure you do a lot of social media listening of being a big consumer company that affects as many people as Delta. You probably get massive amounts of information. There are people, I, I have to confess, there have been times when I've complained about something uh, on social media and thought, well, maybe they'll, you know, send me some, give me some frequent flyer points or something <laughs> that I can. Uh, but so how do you decide, how, what's the process for escalation? When, when does it, again, you look, we talked a minute ago about what happened with uh, David Dow and United Airlines that turned into a crisis in less than 12 hours. Yeah. Just went from Chicago to China and bam. Yeah. Uh, w how does the escalation process work within Delta? When, 
Un when does something come to you from your social media listening people? Well, what you said is true because you know all of our customers. We have two hundred million video uh, amateur videographers you know, <laughs> on our on planes, your planes. <laughs> and and it, it's amazing. And I, I've I've, uh, I, I've 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 been paying obviously a lot of close attention to this. And the first instance when some disruption occurs, whether it's an airport or an airplane, you see everyone's got their phone in the air. You know, people are taking video of it, pictures of it, thinking that they're going to be somehow. Actually, it was even happening in this room last night uh, during uh, some of the interviews. So, yeah, yeah it's yeah. part of life. So, 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 and our people are accustomed to being on stage, right? We, we're, we're accustomed to being on stage in front of we have 200 people rather than 200 million people around, yeah. around the world. So what, one of the things that we've done is that in our operations control center back in Atlanta, we've, we've, we've actually housed the social media communications team that's got its tentacles across the network, actually sitting at the, at the spine. And the captain on board our ships has ultimate decision rights as to what happens on board that plane. But he's got that lifeline to call into Atlanta, whether it's due to a weather issue, yeah. or whether it's due to a customer issue, yeah. to make certain that, that, they're, that they're united in making a decision before they go off. Because our people are always trying to do the right thing, but when people look at it in isolation as the issue, and many times when you've seen some of these issues, I'm not going to talk about the United issue, I think that was, that was a terrible, terrible issue that everyone agrees around. But also people, you, you, have, you have gamers in there. We've had people try to create a disruption to get, and, and then capture it on video and then it'll only show wow. a snippet of the video wow. on I board. Didn't go that far. And, and the first thing they'll do is go contact an attorney and they'll shot the story media and then actually come back 30 days later to try to, try to create, create headlines around it. So it's, 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 it's a very different, but you know, the other good thing though that you said is the news cycle is moving fast. And so part of it is you just have to have the fortitude to, to, kind, of, to, kind, of, to kind of sit through it and it, it's hard because you want to respond, you want to react, but sometimes the best response is to just wait to the next news cycle too. Uh, but that, that also increases the judgment required because you have to know which ones That's right. you can wait on. That's right. Which ones you, have to, you, have, you, have, you, have, you have to understand what's, and, and have an ins instinct for it. Uh, uh, I want to I, I, I uh, open it up in, in just a minute because we have a bunch of CEOs in the, in the audience here who are uh, 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 living with this themselves. Mark, I'm going to put you on the spot first, so prepare yourself. Can we get a, a, a microphone to Mark Haplamazian, please? Um, but... but uh, but bef before we do the, we do that. Um, so you you have all this in intense pressure that you're you're living with on a regular basis. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I just lost my question. That's good. It was a good question. Too. Okay. It's going to come back. Start, to me it, start, it started with intense pressure, so I'm yeah. not, I'm not certain it I want to I really, want to understand the rest really of it. Really good. Let, let me go to Mark uh, and have you bail me out, please. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to bail you out, but. <laughs> <laughs> Um, look, I think um, I uh, obviously followed your uh, decision with respect to the NRA. Uh, our storyline with the NRA is, uh, took also an interesting twist because um, we, uh, w sorry, I'm Mark Hoplomazian, I'm CEO of Hyatt Hotels. Thank you. And could you stand up, Mark, sure, just because I'm sorry. We got, we're catching so, this on video. Um, oftentimes we have people on various sides of different, uh, different issues. Uh, and our hotels are open to everyone. Um, so we're headquartered in Chicago and the University of Chicago came out last year and instead of promoting safe spaces, they promoted um, actually bringing people with controversial views and made, made that the mandate for the university um, with the idea that it would be um, promoting the elevation of understanding. And so for us, um, like Ed, uh, very much a purpose-driven enterprise. Uh, our purpose is to care for people so they can be their best. That sense of care begins with empathy and an elevated level of understanding. And we believe that we're here to elevate understanding of the world and the other people in the world and helping to facilitate that through travel with Ed's help. <laughs> so you get them there and we'll help, we'll help to uh, care for them when they're with us. So things that uh, come up, uh, really challenge us to say, is this are the decisions that we're making consistent with that purpose? And do they promote the purpose? Do they allow us to actually fulfill that purpose by way of promoting a higher level of understanding? So there's a large uh, citywide kind of uh, meeting for the NRA in Dallas. Uh, and we got, um, I would say, about equal measure of pro and con. Now, we're not the only hotel in Dallas hosting these people. There are 
thousands and thousands of participants, and virtually every major hotel in the city is going to have people coming to that convention. And but we were called on and threats and implementation of boycotts and things like that, which we've experienced many times in the past over exactly the same topic, which is you need to take a stand on this, and if you don't, you're boycotted, and I'm going to promote the boycott to all of my constituents, and exactly the opposite on the other side. If you, if you were to reject people coming to your hotel, we'll do the same. And so for us, the question is, is it safe for our, can we, can we actually uh, uh, stand up and say that we can provide a safe environment for this to happen? Um, and is it something that we can reasonably support by way of elevating understanding and the condition for that that we've been in search of is what are those groups that are primarily engaged in um, hateful activities where they're trying to shut the dialogue down and exercising hate speech and other things that are anti-elevation of understanding. And those are the groups that we, we are actually screening out. And has the threshold cha changed, Mark? Is it different than it was 10 years ago or 20 years For ago? For sure it is. I mean, there's no question that that's And, and is that because your standard is different or because there are more of these uh, 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 groups that are peddling hate? I think it's uh, our, our consciousness is really elevated, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's a never-ending stream of, of uh, uh, opinions being ex expressed and the social media um, uh, content is is really significant. So I would say that our consciousness around all these issues is elevated. We spend a lot more time thinking about it, talking about it, processing it. But it's it's definitely uh, by virtue of the fact that there's a lot more there are a lot more voices in the yeah. market. Could, could I add to what Mark's yeah. saying? Because uh, you know, I, I'm, I, I didn't know that we had this discount program. You know, it's it's my, that, actually the silliness is there were only 13 people that even had signed up for the discount. You're so, kidding? It's over 13. It's over 13, 13 people. people. Okay. 13 people. And so, so I had no idea. The thing. So you didn't so, save a lot of money by getting full uh, fare from them. <laughs> no, just the opposite. It uh, costs us a lot. You know, they do the average, you know, so, you know, this cost you $3 million a customer, right? <laughs> um, but the way we found out, the way I found out about it is, and, and you know, because the NRA was about a week after the shooting, they stayed low for a while, and then the week after the shooting is when the rhetoric really started flying. The kids at Parkland sent me. Wow pictures of the website where they had Delta Airlines. Of your website? Of my, uh, no, of, of the NRA website. Oh, the NRA where website. Where they had the little discount, they had the Delta Airlines logo on wow. it. Wow. Uh, along with other companies, by the way. And the, and the kids the kids said, what are you going to do about it? Wow. That's different. That's wow. different. Then thank God, uh, others, thank God uh, they other, did. Other CEOs in the group who have, right here, uh, please stand and identify yourself. Hi, Elise Nelson. I'm CEO of Vital Voices Global Partnership. We work on investing in women leaders around the world. And I think, you know, in just that recent story and so much of the conversation you've talked about, your ability, obviously, to create culture and the way that you responded, I mean, it's so courageous, so thank you for that. But you obviously also have the ability, as does everyone in this room, to create culture more broadly in society, right, from a big company. And what I wonder is, in the wake of the last six months of the Me Too movement, how do you see it as your responsibility to not just sort of remove, you know, bad behavior from your company, but create that culture more broadly that's going to be about respect and not about sexual harassment? You know, I'm glad she asked that because that was the question that I got hung up on a minute ago, <laughs> which is, which is unlike... I un believe you. <laughs> unlike, well, it's so it's true. It, because unlike a lot of people in this room, you have, your workforce is completely distributed. Yeah. You probably never get more than four of them together in a room at any given time. And so you have to create culture yeah. among people who are all the hell over the place. Yeah. Uh, when, when I'm asked what my job responsibility is, I've, I've, I've got a very simple five word, taking care of our people. That's it, that's full stop, taking care of our people. Uh, you haven't heard me talk about airplanes up here, you don't haven't heard me talk about airport tech, I can talk about all that stuff. But unless you're, you've got your people on your side and your culture and your values on your side, none of that other stuff matters. And so how and is so, the, yeah. So as a result of that, and we are, the majority of our workforce, we got a very strong you know, female workforce, in fact, the majority of our, our, our demographic is actually female, you know, whether it's flight attendants, you know, airport agents, reservation agents. There's a lot of, a lot of uh, heavy uh, domination of, of female. And so, Can I just stop you for a second there and say, how about at the leadership level? 
at the leadership level, we're not where we need to be. We're improving a lot. Uh, it's clearly not where we need to be, and that's, that's, a, that's a forever, forever goal to continue to get better at that. Uh, but we have a, uh, a strong um, issue, not just within society on, the, on that topic, but it's also within the, the, the tubes of our airplanes, in our cabins. And so you've got you know, customers and passengers. When you carry 200 million people, you're going to have some bad people uh, around the world. And, and these issues about, you know, in, terms of, in terms of harassment, you know, actually we, we see it from an even broader perspective in terms of where it is in society. So absolutely, it's, it's an issue that we, we take, take to heart. Uh, I'm pleased to say uh, I'm unaware of any significant uh, matters that Delta's had in that regard. You know, we put, our, we put our values on the line every day in terms of how we approach the world and how we approach our, our fellow, fellow colleagues. And it's, it's something that, you know, as a leader of the company, I I, you know, it's my personal responsibility to make sure that we, we do the right thing. Uh, comments or questions from other CEOs in the group on how they're, uh, uh, how they're dealing with these same issues? Yeah, Tom. And, and please identify yourself and, yeah, thanks. Sure, Tom Quinlan, uh, CEO of LSC Communications. Just from a board governance standpoint, did, when you made that statement, did the board then, after that, ask for a, a, sort of a heads up or put any constraints on you on a go forward basis? Um, no, you, can I just ask you, are you surprised that, there was, that it didn't go to the board first? Curious, I mean, some boards are, I, I believe some CEOs have great relationships with the boards and the boards are fine, others I think, uh, would probably, you know, wrap on the knuckles for uh, for, for that big yeah. of a statement. You know, my uh, I, I got nothing but support from my board after after the fact. I, I, I sent a note the next day as to what I you know, what we did, not I did what we did. And it wasn't a, a unique. You know, I engaged our management team, you know, a, a, a select few, in, in making the decision. We knew there was going to be backlash attached to it, particularly what was pending in Georgia. Uh, and yes, I got a couple of questions, but broadly speaking. The, the, uh, the tone of the, of the commentary from the NRA and seeing Delta's name in the midst of that, of that discussion going on, we just couldn't be there. Uh, it was, to me, it was black and white. And if, if my board and my board did not, they were fully supportive. Had my board questioned that decision making, they would have questioned me as a CEO. I mean, I thought it was that black and white. And, and $40 million is a lot of money. Uh, but there's, there's no amount of money that's going to put enable you to think differently about an issue. And, and what I said to our team at the time as we're making the decision, take the money off the table. Because the, the money actually made it easy. Because then it got into corporate blackmail, and almost corporate bribery that, you know, we'll give you this money if you change a business decision. Yeah. That actually made it easier for me to justify, not harder. If you took the money off the table, then you just start looking at the values of it. That's what we had to do. Yeah. Uh, Stan, can we get a microphone right over here to Stan Burton? Stan Bergman, CEO of Henry Schein. First, I admire the speed in which you made your decision um, and also admire the fact that the board was uh, so supportive. Did you get any questions from shareholders relative to the $40 million? Uh, oh, yeah. And, and how oh, did yeah. you handle it? Well, we, we handled it the way we had, quite, we had questions from our employees. We have a lot of, a lot of NRA members within our, within our ranks. We're, we're large up in the, the, the heart, we're large in the heartland. We're large in the, the northern part of our, our country where you have a lot of NRA uh, participants. Uh, we had a lot of people just didn't understand that they, they thought we were taking sides, even though we were trying to get out of the debate. They thought we were deliberately taking sides. Uh, we had already, previous to that, had reached out to the Parkland community and said, "What can we do to help?" So we'd already offered to fly the kids up to the. We took we took 500 of the kids to the rally in Washington. Wow. But that was before the NRA stuff. That even we, before we, it happened, we did that the next day. We yeah. said, "What can as part of a community outreach? Wow. What can we do to help?" Um, and and so this 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 was an issue that 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 touched our touched our heart touched our soul. Yeah. I think part of what you're seeing about the the raise of social consciousness is that companies are, as Tim said last night, they, they're they're more than just a collection of individuals. There's yeah. there's a heartbeat to what we do, and it, it and it's very tangible when yeah. you're running an organization yeah. like that. And, and and so as a result of that, our opportunity to move quickly with our with our people, speed was speed was really important. I, I didn't have time to sit and wait 48 hours to, to take a poll as to what to do. So you know, you mentioned earlier that the 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 concentration span of social media tends to be short. Uh, but in my experience, the concentration span of the NRA tends to be long. Oh, yeah. Are they 
going after you still? Or I'm, they still I'm still you? I'm still on their public enemy list. Yeah, I still get uh, I still get uh, the emails, and uh, I I've, I have not, and I and I've always made my uh, my email and my my contact information available so people find me very easily, uh, very very easily. And they're finding you. Yeah, and, and, and it's, it's every, every month that they send their, send their circulars out, I'm on the front page of it, and it's fine. Uh, Marjorie. Hi, I'm Marjorie Krauss, um, I'm, and I'm, I'm the executive chairman of APCO Worldwide. Um, we've been finding that this whole concept of speaking out um, has been put in a category of social risk, um, a new kind of risk factor for boards to look at. And given that the people who tend to come here already kind of get it. You know, one of the things that I just didn't know if um, you'd like to comment whether this is a way to maybe get boards and executives who maybe are less inclined to focus on the, um, on the risk of not acting um, and trying to evaluate what the social risk is and how that affects the business uh, opportunities for the company. Yeah, that is a great question. We. You know, I'm, I'm not here because I'm trying to promote more people to do what I do. I mean, I just tell them my story. Alan invited me to come up, and it's, it's great. Uh, I can tell you almost 90% of the correspondence, the email, the messages I've received on this have been positive. I still, on my airplanes, I fly our airplanes every day. Um, people still seek me out on board the planes to thank us for, for that decision. Uh, people are, people, people thought it was about time. People in Georgia, people in Atlanta, the business community of Atlanta, has stood by me and stood by Not us. Not a moment of regret. Not a moment of regret. And they said, thank you for, because they're all facing these issues. Yeah. And uh, they're tired of, of special interest groups and lobbyists bullying their way through. And the fact that someone had such a specific cost to, to, to bear to make that decision, they, 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 they told, they, they've told us collectively they're proud of us. Uh, Ed Bastian, great way to get our day started here. Thank you so much. Thank for you, Alan. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you.